Hey YouTubers, this is a brief review of the Whirlpool Gold Series. I wanted to cover a few things on the dishwasher, one its installation, uh, how it is towards, towards the front as, it, as you look at it, uh, and then its usage on the, on the interior. I'm pretty particular, I like for it to be functional. That's, that's probably the most important thing to me. I will sacrifice looks any day for something that is well thought out. The installation is pretty straightforward. The water connection is at the front of the dishwasher down at the bottom. Standard five foot hose was okay for me, which reached just fine if you're a little bit further. That might be an issue, be aware of that. But it doesn't come with the water hose uh, anyhow, so I recommend a braided uh, water line. Change it out as you need to. Last year it does come with the, the drain hose. It is on the left side of the unit. So that, the length of that hose is just fine as well. The feet are four adjustable feet. They're not wheels. Some might have rear wheels, but you can tilt it up, slide it in, and then adjust the front. This is uh, four adjustable feet. The uh, directions were pretty accurate in terms of measuring the height of the countertop, adjusting the feet, slide it in, and then you can level it off. I think for me it was an inch and a quarter on the back and an inch and a half on the front. I did have to lower the front a little bit to get it in because of my hardwood floors. As soon as I got it in, it leveled up just fine. The installation was pretty easy, pretty trivial, as most dishwashers are. But I can't think of anything that uh, might be a gotcha. Next thing is is the, the front here. I have used this a few times. I wanted to make sure I understood how the unit functioned, how it worked, how well it ran, whatnot, before I gave it a review. First thing I want to point out is along the front, you have a handle, of course, to open the unit, and as it's down, you might use a hand to lift it up, which causes a lot of fingerprints, a lot of gunk, a lot of grime build up out here, so you have to wipe that down quite frequently. The next thing is, is all the controls are along the top surface here. You can't really see. There's no front indicator in terms of where the unit is in its cycle, so you have to be able to actually open it up. And over here to the right is a clean and sanitized indicator. If it's drying, you don't know that it's currently in its drying cycle until you actually open it up and you have to close it. That is one big drawback. However, it's not a deal breaker again. Uh, let's see here. Let's move to the interior. All right, let's talk about the inside of the dishwasher. So this is probably where I'm more particular about. Let's basically go from the top down. So this is the top rack. The two sides. I guess, whatever, the two sides fold down, essentially, and uh, the left side does have a few plastic pieces here to actually hold up uh, maybe Tupperware lids or something to the nature. On the right is a fold-down rack that uh, can actually hold wine glasses, so you sit your wine glass in here and the stem actually seats right in here, and it actually keeps it from uh, laying down the side, potentially being broken, I suppose. Uh, the other thing is, is this top rack does we just uh, unlatch the two sides, then the rack actually slides out, and as you can see, we have two sets of wheels. You can uh, these back in. It's going to be a little tricky. There we go. So, that way you can get uh, larger appliances down in the lower half. The next thing is, is there are three sprays. Nozzles, we'll call them. I don't know the technical term. But anyhow, they're on the top, middle, and bottom. The top isn't nearly as large as this bottom one. It's probably about half the size, actually. It's probably about uh, six to eight inches in diameter. Now, the next thing is, is we got the bottom rack. Nothing too fancy. There's uh, really no bells and whistles on this one. One thing I do like is they do sit uh, well enough that plates sit in there and they don't all fall over. They, they will, of course, there's nothing to really hold them back, but they certainly have the opportunity, at least for my plates, to, uh, to stand upright and not be laying down. Uh, that, that's a huge deal for me, is, is, is being able to fit as much in here as possible without having to fumble with things that won't stand upright, in particular plates when they should stand vertical. So, last thing is, for carrying dishes is the uh, silverware holder, we'll call it. It does have these two tops, and you can put your silverware down through here that'll actually separate your dishes. Uh, it is rather small, so this is, this is all that are handled by uh, 
uh, this, is, this is it. So I don't find it to be too bad. We're a house of uh, three. It's so not too crazy for us. The, the next thing that this is removable, and of course, uh, they do promote it can be placed on the sides, front, uh, believe not the other side, so it's just the left side or the front if you wanted to. So then the next thing, of course, is the where the soap dispenser is. So one, one thing that I don't care for too much, but not, not really any way to get around it. So as you close it, and if you have anything blocking right here, you have anything tall, let's say uh, uh, you have a cutting board right here, for example, this will not flip open. So as it releases, it uh, will open up all the way and let the soap fall in. So that is something to be aware of. Other than that, that's it. So next, let's talk about the filtration system on this. This doesn't have a garbage disposal. It's only filtering. So we'll take a look at that next. All right, the last part is the filtration system on this. Uh, I've already pretty much disassembled it, but uh, just to make this go a little bit easier. Anyhow, I just uh, actually reattached the bottom filter. There we go. It's locked into place. Anyhow, so there's three sets of filters here. Essentially, this is the first portion of it, so the top, so that's that's uh, one piece of it. The next piece here is if we unlock this, pull this out. This is the next filter, and uh, and then the last, of course, is the uh, this this bottom piece that kind of covers the whole thing here. So there we go, and uh, that pops up. That's it. So this, this catches all the food. They say if you rinse your dishes dishes frequently, then you clean this out maybe once a year. If you don't rinse your dishes out very often, then uh, do it maybe once a month. It's really the only indicators that they give. So there we are. That's all put back in place. All right. So the next thing is let's talk about the controls and the features. All right. So this is the cycles. We'll go from left to right. Uh, first thing I want to point out is this is energy star rated. So let's go through the controls left right. Start with center. This is the most recommended cycle for the loads to use for day-to-day -day use with typical soil. The next one is heavy. This is hard to clean, heavily soiled pots, pans, casseroles, and regular tableware. The next one is normal. That's intended for normal amounts of food soil. Eco is used for lightly soiled items, china, and crystal. Uh, this is the most water and energy efficient cycle using less water and energy while maintaining good wash performance. The next one is the one hour wash. Uh, used for fast results, the one hour wash cycle can clean normal soil using slightly more water and energy. Uh, then in, for improved drying, uh, select the heated dry option, which adds a half an hour. The uh, last one is overnight. Overnight is used for loads with normal amounts of food soil. Uh, it's a longer cycle and therefore is ideal for a run overnight. Uh, the longer cycle is to develop an overnight to save energy. The cycle has a longer soak time before the main wash begins. All right, so next we'll look at the options. Basically, from left to right again, top rack wash is for uh, smaller loads, slightly soiled. Basically, just focusing on the top rack, obviously. Next one is high temp wash. Loads containing tough baked on food. Basically, increases the water temperature and the duration of the cycle. Then the next one is sandy rinse. Sandy rinse is to sanitize your dishes, glassware, in accordance with NSF ANSI standard 184 for residential dishwashers. I don't think that really pertains to us too much. So if it does mean something to you, then uh, you can read about it a little bit more. Then the next one is heat dry. For best results, dry dishes with heat. High dry provides the optimum dry performance, eco dry. Provides energy saving and good dry performance. Then a uh, four hour delay, obviously that delays the start of the wash cycles. Then the last one is the lock. Essentially locks the controls, does not lock the dishwasher closed, perhaps like you might think of a, a kitchen oven. This just, again, locks the controls. Then to the right, we have the start, resume, and cancel drain. The start, resume, anytime that you want to start the dishwasher, you have to click or push the start button. Let's say you want to add a dish, you have to, after it's already started, you open it up, you add a dish, you close it, it doesn't resume automatically, it actually will beep at you. You have to press the start resume button again to proceed with the washing. Then of course cancel is probably relatively obvious, uh, push the cancel button and drains the water. Then to the right we have the clean sanitized, 
indicators. The clean is basically the dishwasher has completed. Sanitized is when the Sani rinse option has completed. That's it. Do notice that the only indicators are here on the top and uh, not on the front as we had noticed before. All right, that's it for this review. I hope it gave you everything that you needed to uh, help you determine whether or not it was a good buy. Uh, we think it is. We're pretty pleased with it. Uh, the price is right for a stainless steel and uh, really don't think you could go wrong with buying this unit. So I hope you enjoy it. Take care. Hey YouTubers, this is a brief review of the Whirlpool Gold Series. I wanted to cover a few things on the dishwasher. One, its installation, uh, how it is towards, towards the front as, it, as you look at it, uh, and then its usage on the, on the interior. I'm pretty particular. I like for it to be functional. That's, that's probably the most important thing to me. I will sacrifice looks any day for something that is well thought out. The installation is pretty straightforward. The water connection is at the front of the dishwasher down at the bottom. Standard five foot hose was okay for me, which reached just fine if you're a little bit further. That might be an issue, so be aware of that. But it doesn't come with the water hose uh, anyhow, so I recommend a braided uh, water line. Change it out as you need to. Let's see, it does come with the, the drain hose. It is on the left side of the unit, so that the length of that hose is just fine as well. The feet are four adjustable feet. They're not wheels. Some might have rear wheels so that you can tilt it up, slide it 